Hi, everyone. Sorry about the technical difficulties there. Um, yeah, so, you know, today Kyle and Sam talked a little bit about the future of Gatsby. I'm, my name is Andrew. I'm the head of cloud services at Gatsby, so my job is to build out all of the commercial things. Um, yeah, I'm really tall, which kind of sucks, especially if you're not good at basketball. Um, I love back-end development, and I fucking hate CSS. So... <laughs> Um, yeah, just a little bit about me. So, cool. I um, mean, like I said, I'm I'm the head of the cloud services team here at Gatsby. So we're working on building out the commercial product. Um, like I said, Kyle and Sam already talked a little bit about the future. Um, I just want to share a little bit more with you guys today about sort of what we've been doing on the cloud services team and support of the open source product that most of us already love in this room. So, um, if you think about it. Like, what does Gatsby do and for whom? Well, all products, or almost all products, are built by teams of people, not just an individual developer. So this is usually a team of, you know, product manager, multiple developers, maybe a tech lead, a designer, sales, marketing. All these people are all collaborating to try to build a product and ship it to market that their customers really love. Um, so usually you also need a lot of collaboration in that respect. Um, and... You know, no one wants to build a shitty product that no one likes to use, so everyone wants to use the best tool for the job. And there are certainly a lot of tools you can use. Um, you know, there was, there was like that old meme in 2015 about JavaScript fatigue. Well, it hasn't really gone away. There's, you know, there's only more of them now, and every single week it seems like someone has a new opinion on how you ought to do things with JavaScript. Um, so, you know, everyone's kind of feeling like that <laughs> most of the time. Um, yeah, I know I am. I don't like having to change my tool set every week. Um, and, and this kind of boils down, I think, a little bit to why people love to use Gatsby, and, and that's because they don't want to have to make, spend, you know, 80% of their effort making decisions that only provide 20% of the value, you know? What bundler you use, what CSS system you use, what framework you use, all these different things don't really matter to your customers. Your customers really only care about whether or not the product that they're using is fast and pleasant to use. That's it. They don't care about whether you use ES6 or ES5 or TypeScript or PureScript or any of the other million. I think, isn't there like a Chrome script now? I think Google announced some sort of weird, bizarre language. Maybe I missed that. I don't know. But yeah, so no one wants to make these decisions. These decisions suck and they're not actually making you money, right? So, coming back to the question, why Gatsby? Well, it makes it where you don't have to make those decisions. And according to the 80-20 principle, of course, you know, 80% of your value comes from 20% of your effort. The other 80% of your effort is just wasted time. So, what is 80% of the value? Well, that's building products that your customers love, that are fast, rich, and delightful experiences. And sort of like painless and lightning fast iteration. You don't want to be bogged down by the need to constantly refactor your code or to constantly have to decide about new ways to manage state on the client or new ways to fetch data and new ways to do this or that. You don't want to have to make those decisions. You kind of just want something that works really well, that requires a lot less thinking and allows you to move really quick. Sort of like Rails on the front end, if you will. I know Rails has kind of a bad rep at times, but you know, for, for slinging products pretty quick, it's a pretty cool tool. So then, of course, you want to eliminate 80% of the work. So that's like choosing and learning a new framework. Um, every time you hire a senior developer, there's always that little risk that the senior developer is going to want to rebuild the entire thing. And if they're a loud developer, they'll probably be very good at marshalling everyone in your company to sort of go along with it, which isn't very fun. Um, you don't want to have to set up, you know, a transpiler, an asset bundler, figure out what CSS system to use. All of these things are sort of ancillary problems to solve that don't, again, help you ship products to your customer. All they really do is make you choose one of the five flavors of the same thing, right? Um, and also, one of the most important things about sort of work is communication between team members, because there is nothing that will slow developers down more and product development down more than constant interruptions. People asking them, how do I, what's the URL for this preview? What's the URL for that preview? How do I see what the current state of the project is? All of these things just interrupt flow. They're not useful. So, again, why Gatsby? Uh, well, it's business value. 
if teams choose Gatsby because they really want to move fast and they want their user experience to also move equally equally fast. And they also want a lower maintenance cost driver. You don't want to have to constantly pay your engineers to refactor your stuff. That sucks. Um, and you know, if you make bad architectural decisions up front and you choose the wrong libraries to use, it, it only exponentially multiplies that maintenance cost driver because now you're constantly having to refactor, you're constantly having to dry up code, you're constantly designing and learning as you're building. And it's a much faster model to just learn one thing, learn it well, and just execute relentlessly towards the target. But then what about organizational needs? So it's all great and dandy if developers can move quickly and don't have to refactor, but what about the need for developers to collaborate with non-technical folks as they're iterating on their products? Well, that's kind of a, you know, unsolved piece here, at least in the static site world. There are some tools like Netlify that will allow you to do preview builds, and that works pretty well, um, but the feedback loops just still isn't there. there um, I like to think of it as having two sort of distinct pathways that you get feedback when you're working on a product. The first pathway is the developer experience. So if as a developer, if I'm sitting in front of my computer and I'm drinking some coffee, I'm making code edits, and I'm you know, hitting you know, uh, colon S to save in Vim, I'm getting those hot reloads on my browser, in my browser via Webpack, and that's great. For as a developer, my life is really easy. Even if I edit content sources on Contentful, with, with just a little bit of ingrock setup, I can have all of those webhooks routed directly into my machine. So life is great, right? Well, let's take a look. I actually have a little demo, and we'll, oops, that wasn't supposed to happen. Okay. <laughs> let's see if I can get to it. Cool, so I actually have Gatsby running locally right here. And I also have an ingrock server and I've wired that up to Contentful via their webhook API. And Contentful is currently the only one we support. I know Content Stack, I've heard grumblings about them supporting webhooks at some point, so that's another one we kind of have our eyes on. But for now, we can use Contentful's webhook system. And so here is on my local machine, hello world. If I edit in Contentful, you know, delete some exclamation points. And I wait a second, because I'm working on a cellular phone connection right now. At some point, Contentful will decide to actually send me the webhook, and that usually takes about 30 seconds, unfortunately. And there we go. So that's reloaded. I, I now have that complete developer flow with a little bit of ingrock. I can edit content, see the change, I can edit code if I, you know, change code on my machine, that's gonna hot reload. So you get the whole end-to-end -end picture. The problem with this approach is that that doesn't make anyone happy except the developer. And your developer's not usually writing your content or your copy, they're usually just writing your code. So what actually happens is that, you know, Webpack, Gatsby, React, they provide all these magical sprinklings that let you do these types of things, but you end up with a happy developer and a not-so-happy product manager who is constantly hounding the developer to find out what the current state looks like, what the preview instance. So now we no longer have a happy developer. We have an unhappy developer. So the second feedback loop, which is kind of, right now, the, the, these are like really the two that you, you're, that you care about as a company, is all of your not, everyone but the developer experience. So what is the experience for your product manager, your designer, your copywriter, and so forth? And you know, you have a, a nice, happy, content writer is sitting there writing stuff in their in their chair on their nice big flat screen and you know we're using let's say that they're using Netlify for preview deploys so let me go to another demo real quick so in the same sort of manner I don't need this anymore let's see if I can do Vim from an angle Oh, screw it, I don't need to change code. I'll just change copy. So I have Netlify hooked up to the same project. And if I wanna see the preview in Netlify, I can also change copy. And this is a really tiny site, it just renders one string. Okay, so I'm gonna add some extra crap on the end. That's gonna trigger a deploy any second now. 
as soon as Contentful decides to send the webhook again. Cool, here we go. So now we, with Netlify, we have to run a full build every time this happens. And with a small site like, you know, a hello world with some extra text, that's not a big deal. But if you have, you know, hundreds of pages, that's not, that is a big deal, right? Locally with Gatsby, if you change the content, even with a thousand page site, it's only really going to re-render and push what changes. But with Netlify or some, like a CI system like Jenkins or Circle, it has to rebuild the entire thing every time. And that only gets slower the more money you're making because the more money you're making, the larger the site is. So you're actually increasing your burn in a linear proportion to the amount of money you're making. And what you really want is a logarithmic burn. You don't want to actually have to pay $100,000 for every one million if you only had to pay $10,000 for 50,000, right? That doesn't make sense. That wasn't linear, but whatever. Well, I guess it kind of was. Cool, so if we go to the net, oops, you're not supposed to see that yet. So if we go to the, <laughs> we click the preview button, of course you get the new version, right? And, and it's gonna give us a special URL each time. I know there's a way to sort of follow a branch, I believe, but in, in this example, it's gonna give us a special URL, and that's why I'm talking about having the, having the developer kind of harassed every time it changes. Um, so, in that case, our developer and our product manager also isn't, aren't happy. So that's not great either. So there has to be a better way, right? We, there needs to be a way where as a developer and as a non-technical person, we both get the same exact experience. And that experience for the product manager and the content editor should match precisely the experience the developer has. They should be able to look at logs, they should be able to see things as they refresh and so forth. So that's what we've been working on. Um, and I know if, if any of you have smartphones, if you'd like to, I'm, I'm actually gonna give a live demo of a product that we've been working on in just a moment. Before I do that, I'm, first of all, you guys can go ahead and snap this and load up the page. I'm gonna open up Prisma and walk through the designs that we're currently building out. Um, most of the back end's done at this point, it's just slapping the UI on top. So I'm gonna walk through the designs and then I'll do a live demo of our alpha version for you guys. And this is Gatsby Preview. Probably should have said that at the beginning. Cool. Everyone get the snap? Cool. All right, so this is Gatsby Preview. This is gonna be your one place that your developers, your product manager, your designers, everyone, including your clients and external stakeholders, well, they won't be touching this, but they will be able to see as you change content a live copy of what you're working on. If you're at a consulting agency or a freelancer, this is huge because you no longer have to create like ingrock URLs or sharing special URLs that only work if your laptop's open. It actually runs in the cloud completely decoupled from an, any individual developer. So when you first come into Gatsby Preview, obviously you'll want to sign in with GitHub because that's to start with the contents, the source control sor sources that we're actually going to support is GitHub. We're not going to support GitLab. That's I think coming later. But to start with, you would obviously sign in with GitHub. You'll add a new site from one of your repos. So you'll get this nice list, kind of like Circle CI. When, when, once you uh, SSO with GitHub, you'll we'll be able to fetch your repos. You'll be able to add them with like environment variables that can, you can map in your config files to your different data sources. And from this, you'll get this nice sort of timeline of everything that's happening to your site. So as you change code, like let's say you add a node module, it'll actually close your preview instance, reinstall your node modules, bring it back up, and you'll see a new log section. So this would have been like an old log section that, you, that was like, I don't know, a couple days before, right? And then you'll see the exact same log output that you would see as a developer on your local machine. And then of course, you know, these are kind of useless views right now, but I hope you guys get the general gist. Okay, cool. So does everyone have it open on their, their computers? Cool. So I'm just gonna come over here. Does everyone see this particular permutation right now? Gatsby preview. Oh yeah, I forgot this terrible hack. Cool, hopefully 
our infrastructure didn't just crap the bed because this is the, literally the most connections we've ever had open to it at one point. <laughs> Sweet. So now everyone's happy, right? Everyone's happy because they have Gatsby, and that's a great tool, right? So, um, yeah. We definitely need early adopters for our closed beta. Um, and I'm about to go into questions, but before then, if you guys just want to snap this, if you want to sign up for early adoption, you can click this, and it will take you to a page that you can sign up for early adoption on. So cool.